I, I, I love, the, love the really practical questions because that's actually what this training is all about. Um, you know, practically, how are we going to live our lives? You know, how, how are we going to find the capacity to, to live our lives in the way that we want to live them? To how are we going to find the capacity to make the decisions in our lives that are actually going to be of benefit to ourselves and to everybody else in our lives? And um, it's amazing, actually, that that, that that sounds completely obvious. Because that's, that, that's what we all want. You know, we, we all want to live a life that is going to be fulfilling for ourselves and a life where we're going to be able to support the people that we care about and, and, and do some good in the world. You know, that, that's, it seems so obvious, but that is in itself is quite amazing. You know, that, that shows how natural our beneficial nature is. It's not something that we've had to contrive or or learn. It's completely natural for us to want the best for ourselves and want the best for everybody. And um, that's just perfectly reflected in all of your practical questions. Because we have this desire. But then, practically, how does that look? You know, when we're living our lives, what, what does that mean? You know, how do we make these decisions? And um, it does start with the, the, the proper introduction to open intelligence. Because it's in open intelligence that we find this capacity to really come up with the perfect response and the perfect solution to, to each situation. And this open intelligence is also innate and it's also natural to us. Again, it's not something that we have to get from somebody or that somebody else can give us. We simply have to be introduced to it and then be given a really a really simple but comprehensive support network that, that, that will, will teach us, if you like, how we can rely on it in these practical circumstances. And the introduction to open intelligence is as simple as just to stop thinking for a moment. Just to pause your train of thought and notice that there's an alertness, there's a cognizance, the ability to know, and that this is naturally present. So when you stop thinking for a moment, you just allow yourself space to notice that that's the case. And um, what you begin to see, or what I began to see, as I, as I just relaxed the need to constantly focus on all of the descriptions, and um, in the Balance View training, all of the descriptions, all of the things that we can label, all of the things that we can name and describe, um, we could either call points of view or we could call data. And that just helps to keep it really simple. We don't need to try and work out how this particular description is related to that particular description, you know, where they come from, what they mean. The fundamental nature of all experience is exactly the same. All descriptions, all experiences, everything we know, shines forth from this same basic state of knowing, this open intelligence. And the application of this instinctive recognition in our everyday lives gives us the capacity to know exactly what to do and what to say in each circumstance. And the only way that that can be discovered is by testing it. So we've been given this lovely theory, okay, when I rely on open intelligence, then I'm going to know exactly what to do and what to say. But it will only remain a lovely theory and unless you actually test it out, unless you decide to see whether this theory actually applies to me and my life. And again, there's a really simple instruction. You can test this out for short moments. So taking short moments of just relaxing the need to focus in on all of the ever-changing descriptions and rely on and notice the open intelligence that is naturally present and then see what happens. And first of all, what I noticed was that the first thing this gave me was incredible insight into the nature of my experience. So all of the things that I'd been describing and, and naming and labelling in a particular way as if they had this independent nature, as if they really were 
things that were somehow separate from me and, and could really affect me and I had to work at and worry about wasn't actually true. So I was testing in my own experience to see whether there was anything that I could find in my own experience that, that, could, that had this independent nature that was happening anywhere other than within this vast expanse of open intelligence. And these short moments allowed me a really practical way to test that out, to see whether, okay, right now I've got this huge sense of fear coming up. And it can be tested with anything. And each moment becomes transformed because rather than being something that we've got to work at to control or understand, something like fear or fear of flying. Now there's this intense rush of energy, this huge sense of impending doom, you know, the plane's going to crash and I'm going to die and you know, all of the people that love me will miss me and you know, all of this stuff that just comes up spontaneously. And, and right there is, is the opportunity. You know, test, test out what happens. I mean, um, we've been testing out what happens when we focus in on the descriptions. You know, to, you, you, everybody gets some fear of flying. If you've ever been on a plane, then that's part of the experience. And um, so to focus in on any of the descriptions, immediately we're focusing in on something that is fleeting. We're trying to hold in place and build a big story about something that, that is like a rainbow appearing in space so that we can see it vividly, but there's no way to, to, to grasp it. There's no way to make it, really make it into something, apart from trying to build a huge story around it. So this is what I'm feeling. This energy now is fear. It's obviously fear because I'm on the plane. It's obviously, it's completely irrational. I know it's irrational, but I can't stop it. This happens to me every time I'm on the plane, you know, and I can't use my strategies now because I'm trying to rely on open intelligence, and. There's this huge stream of data. And focusing in on that really just makes it really seem as if it is something that, that has this power over us. You know, our, our palms begin to sweat and we grip the seat tight. And, you know, it's a, it's a really uncomfortable experience. And so there is your opportunity to, to really face the fear from the vantage of open intelligence. And in that short moment, what I discovered was that the fear also was shining forth from open intelligence. The story about the fear was also shining forth from open intelligence. None of them could be found to have this independent nature. And so immediately that, that gave me a, a clearer perspective. It gave me, if you like, the capacity to decide what I'm going to do in this particular situation. Am I going to continue buying into this story of fear or am I going to relax and rely on open intelligence? And so the capacity to make the right decision is easy. It's innate. We have this incredible intelligence that is vast and expansive like, like a cloudless sky. We can't find an edge or a limit or a boundary to our mind. It includes everything we can experience. And it includes it all effortlessly. It contains it all. And it has the capacity to see everything incredibly clearly already. All we need to do is keep relaxing and relying on this intelligence rather than, than all of the ever-changing descriptions. For short moments repeated many times. And what I saw was that things like fear just lost their grip. And they just lost their grip. For me, I kind of, I never really, the fear of flying was something that came up, but it was never something that I really got caught into much. But I, one of the fears I had was this, this sense of just impending doom. And it was like a, a nameless fear. And it, it didn't make any sense because it wasn't really about anything. But still I had this sense of this, you know, something is about to go wrong. <laughs> and, you know, it was there. It was like this thing just hovering just, just behind me. And it was there a lot of the time. And it didn't matter that I knew it didn't make sense. It didn't make it go away. It was still there. And now my experience is, is that um, it's, just, it's just gone, if you like. If, or if it comes up now, I know what the solution is. 
the solution is to completely relax and to, to clarify the nature of this, this thought or this emotion or this experience. To see whether I can find, to find this appearing anywhere other than within this expanse of open intelligence. And immediately I check that out for myself, there's this sense of being able to relax with it. It's not something I actually have to give any attention to. I can make the, the correct decision as to how I use my mind. And um, the whole process of decision making is just fascinating. It's, it's, it's wonderful decision making. Um, so it, it's really actually getting real with ourselves. We're actually becoming more and more familiar with what is actually going on for us in our lives, right here and right now. And seeing that there's this stream of data, there's this stream of descriptions about all kinds of things. And part of that stream of experience or that stream of data is the datum of having to make a decision. But in the same way we checked out the fear, we can also check out the, the datum of having to make a decision. But where does that occur? Does it occur anywhere other than within this vast expanse of open intelligence? In a short moment, the next time a thought of, oh God, I've got to decide that. I need to, I need to decide whether I'm doing this or doing that. You can relax and check out for yourself whether this is occurring anywhere other than, than in, of, as and through open intelligence. And immediately you check that out, the perspective shifts. This, this whole troubling datum of having to make a decision and having to make the right decision actually that becomes much more spacious and open immediately. And what I began to see for myself was that, again, I had all of this story around this one description that would pop up of having to make a decision. Actually, when I look at my life, I'm making decisions the whole time. Every single moment of my life, I'm making decisions. How am I going to move my hands? <laughs> you know, I'm making these decisions all the time, but most of them I'm not sort of, oh, God, right... Do I move my left hand or my right hand first? And, you know, if I move that one there, but then what are all the people out there going to think? And, you know, you, you're, just, you're just living your life and getting on with it. And decisions are being made the whole time as part of this seamless flow without us needing to focus in on them. Now, suddenly something occurs, like what seems like a big decision. I've got to make a decision about my work. You know, this is an important decision. You know, this is something I, I've really got to focus in on. This, this, I, I've got to focus, this is important. You know, moving the hands, that's one thing. Th this, is, this is about my work, this is important. I've got to focus in on it. And, and then we focus in on it and we start thinking about it. Okay, right, well, if I make that decision, then, then this might happen. But if I make the other decision, then the other thing might happen. And then if we do that and that might be the outcome there. And, we're, we're, and You're living this whole life, this whole fantasy world, where you're living all of these different existences, and actually you're just still sitting in your chair. But you're, <laughs> and so you're living in all of these, these, these fantasy worlds that don't actually bear any relationship to, to what's going on. And, um, and it, it makes it really confusing, because you're trying to plan ahead all of these different steps and this whole chain of cause and effect of... You know, one decision and the possible outcomes and another decision and all of the outcomes there. And, and my experience was that no decision I've ever taken in my life, the, none of the outcomes from it, bore any resemblance at all to any of the thinking about the outcomes of it, even the really big decisions. And, and so immediately I could see that I could relax with these things. And when I was relaxed, it was interesting. It wasn't like I was closing down from the decision. From the relaxed perspective, I was actually able to evaluate all of the information around that decision much more clearly. There was no tension around it. And I saw that when a decision had to be made, then it was made effortlessly. In the same way that all of my flow of data was flowing seamlessly in a completely effortless way. The decision-making process wasn't a special datum or a special experience that was somehow apart from this seamless flow. And so when the decision comes up, okay, well, when, when do I speak to somebody in this situation? You know, when do I interfere, if you like? When do I intervene in this, this situation where I can see something is wrong? Exactly the same process applies. 
we sit and, okay, right, I've got to think about this. I've got to work this out. I've got to make the judgment. I need to find the right moment to say something. And all of that thinking, we're completely frozen by all of the thinking. We relax and we see all of that same information clearly, but then when something needs to be said, we can't help ourselves. And the difference is when you're relying on open intelligence, when you can't help yourself but to say something, then what you say comes out in a very clear, very direct and very powerful way that will actually be of benefit to everybody. Even if it comes out in a way that can be surprising or even sound angry. When you deeply know the nature of all of your experience, the flow of benefit is obvious too. And it doesn't look in any particular way. So often just your presence, your firm grounding in knowing your nature as open intelligence has a huge effect on everybody in that situation. And, and family, family tensions are a perfect example of that. You, know, you can see how your gentle openness can have a, a profound effect on really challenging relationships and challenging situations. But there's no fixed way it has to be. There's no rule book in open intelligence. It includes all experience. It includes all data. So it doesn't mean taking up any fixed position. So it doesn't mean saying, I'm relying on open intelligence, therefore I should never say anything. I should always be passive. I should never interfere. But at the same time, the other extreme of constantly interfering, constantly meddling, constantly giving your opinion because you're sure you know best, also doesn't need to be taken up. There is this balanced view. Being passive and completely open when that's what's required. Being very direct and clear and making a direct intervention when that's what's required. And you will see yourself behaving in these ways more and more obviously as you gain confidence in open intelligence. And um, it, it can be surprising sometimes, the things you say. But um, it's the, the benefit also sometimes you may not see or it may not become obvious till a little bit later on. You think, oh my God, what did I just say? I thought I was relying on open intelligence and I just shouted at this person. But then what I've seen often is that was exactly what was required in that situation. If, it, if that was what was needed to, to change the situation where it was actually of more benefit to everybody, then that is what will come out of your mouth. And um, it's just, just the, 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 the desire to care and look after people. I just wanted to mention really quickly when, um, when my father got ill, I'd had lots of ideas and lots of data about um, my parents getting older and caring for them. And, you know, all kinds of ideas like, oh, you know, that's just, you know, you know they, could, they could get some illness that could go on for years and, you know, I'm, I don't want to spend my life looking after them and, you know, all of this stuff. And, and then when, when my father did get very seriously ill, all I wanted to do was look after him. And it didn't mean that all of the data disappeared. And all kinds of data can pop up at any time, completely spontaneously. And that doesn't change just because now you're looking after somebody. But the demonstration of open intelligence and its benefit is that all of this unpredictable display of data, all kinds of crazy thoughts and emotions can come up but none of them have any effect on your capacity to make exactly the right decision in that moment. And that's where the confidence grows. It's not that the data become quieter or less noticeable. It's actually, like you said, usually the complete opposite. Because this where all our strategies of keeping everything at bay and controlling everything, we relax with those and we see that we don't actually need them. Then all of this stuff that we've been, you know, keeping it, just all just comes really flooding out. And, and, and it can be very intense. And when that becomes intense, that's the time to, to reach for support. That's the time where the four mainstays, the support network, are just priceless. Because otherwise it would be completely overwhelming. It, well, that's, that would have been my experience, certainly. 
And yet I had the support to support me each step of the way. To see that I did have the, the stability and the strength to face everything about myself and everything about my life. And um, it's so practical and my gratitude for that is just immense. Because I wouldn't have been able to do this on my own. I know I tried and um, I had some success but mostly it was really hard work and even more confusing. Even after the correct introduction, I needed that support to apply it in a really practical way. That's when it seemed challenging. That's when this instinctive recognition wasn't obvious. But then my confidence has slowly grown, just by being around the mainstays, just by being around other people that were also just, just clear on where they wanted to direct their energy and their time, either focusing on all of the data, the descriptions, or clarifying them all by relying on open intelligence. And when you see other people that are doing that, it's so inspiring. 